So in talking about the platform, so for example, this whole theme of leaving that legacy behind, we know working with clients that sometimes that's not always so easy for them, right? And, and so, but we have a platform that we, we work with, with that type of client all the time. But the platform that we have, it's the classification, it's a DXP or a digital mm -hmm. experience platform. So now that we're focused a little bit there, why don't we start by explaining to our listeners, basically kind of what is DXP, maybe which products aren't a DXP, and then we can kind of go from there. So l let's try to focus the definition so that people can understand a little bit better. Like what is a DXP? Uh, absolutely. Well, DXP is all about the digital experience and the digital mm -hmm. experience is something that is not a static. It's always uh, changing uh, because of the technology, right? Uh, at the beginning, the DXP platforms, they, they only had to deal with this one channel, which was the web browser, right? But right. after that, the mobile devices, the the things like smartwatches or, or whatever, even in your car, you, you can have a, a computer there, um, is, is, is something that is changing. So a DXP platform uh, has is, is a concept that, that has to be evolving with that uh, reality because uh, it's, it's, it's a fast changing uh, topic. I, I like to think uh, about our DXP um, as a DXP that basically can do three things and, 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 and we try to do these three things really well. One is to manage the content. The content is really, really, really important. The content, the content is the foundation uh, behind all any kind of, of digital experience because you always start with a public site experience in which you're trying to sell a product to someone. So it's really important that you can manage your content with, with uh, agility, right? Um, at some point, that content has to be published in, 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 in a space, right? You need to right. create a way to publish that content and to propagate that information. So another thing that is really important for a DXP is to have the mechanism to to basically make sure that you can publish that content to the web. Uh, and, and, and the web is growing as a concept because at the beginning of the internet, the, the World Wide Web was just restricted to, to desktop devices. But now the, the, the mobile web is growing uh, really fast. Uh, we are now talking about web applications that are going to basically take a, a portion of, of the native applications market because you can now uh, build on top of web technologies experiences that are really great uh, so managing those kind of channels is another important thing uh, of creating a, a digital experience platform uh, the content that you can, are managing in your platform uh, you can also uh, want to provide mechanisms to to take that content to other platforms if, if you don't want mm -hmm. to publish that content in your own platform uh, you have to have the apas to basically export that content and making sure that you can deliver that to different devices and to different uh, experiences for instance if, if you want to have a, a big screen in 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 in, in in, in the branches that you have as a, as a financial company, for instance, as a bank, sure. uh, you can feed the screens with contents that came from, from, from your DXP, if your DXP has those uh, capabilities. Uh, that's why we call it the headless uh, content management solution or content platform. That is yes. not a new concept. Uh, the, there always be a headless platform like in the past, we, we, there, there, there is this standard that nobody uses anymore, uh, RSS and Atom for, for uh, syndicating content, but now that mm -hmm. thing evolved to be what's today the, the headless. Thing. And you have the content, you have the, 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 the mechanisms to get, to put that content in front of your users. But now the third part of, of a really good DXP solution is the users, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the users that are interacting with your product is, is really yes. important for a DXP. Uh, not only to manage sessions, because that is too basic, um, it's about managing what is the experience, the actual experience that your user is gonna, uh, are gonna have using your product, right? Uh, creating segments based on the user profile or based on the behavior of that user to making sure that you're managing what the user are seeing is relevant for them. It's, it's, it's an important uh, thing. So uh, in a DXP solution, you expect that everything is connected. 
because you can create awesome experiences building with 10 different solutions. But when you're buying a DXP solution, your expectation is that the platform are gonna have solutions for, for that. And if you don't like the solution that is built on the platform, you can connect to your current uh, or, 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 or the, the, the system that you want. So that is another important thing. The DXP has to have these foundational features, but it's really important for a DXP that you can basically uh, integrate with other platforms because um, the DXP is not gonna manage all the information of your customers. You have a data platform for that. You have CRMs, you have the external database. So in the final architecture of a DXP solution, just you are expecting that your DXP can, can do a, a, all of that. So that's, that is basically the, the, the essentials of our product. Uh, we manage these three things. Um, on top of that, we integrate to other solutions to make sure that we can build the experience that our customers uh, want.